All right, freshmen, um, welcome to Romeo and Juliet, Act 2, Scene 3. Same annotations as before. Um, we're going to try and make this short because some of these videos get kind of long. Uh, all right, so we are at Friar Lawrence's cell. And um, cell isn't what we think of. This is like his bedroom in the monastery where he works, the church. So he has like a little place where he gets, you know, his own space. He uh, has a garden there. So I would assume that he has like some sort of balcony or something. He's out uh, working on his balcony. So we're going to remind ourselves that Romeo is here because he's setting up the wedding. Remember that Juliet gave him a to-do list. And so he has come to Friar Lawrence, his mentor, his teacher, to try and set up this wedding. And uh, so Friar Lawrence comes in with the basket. And here we go. Uh, the gray-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light, and flecked darkness like a drunkard wheels from fourth day's path and tightens fiery wheels. Now ere the sun advance his burning eye, this day, the day to cheer, the night's dank dew to dry. I must upfill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. The earth that's nature's mother is her tomb. What is her burying grave that is her womb? And from her womb, children of diverse kinds, we sucking on her natural bosom find many for many virtues excellent. None but for some and yet all different. So we're going to stop for just a sec. And we're going to write down that Friar Lawrence is also a gardener on top of being a priest. He gardens in his free time and is using plants here as a metaphor. All right. Uh, we're also going to write that right here. Uh, plants can have good and bad qualities. That's what he's talking about. Um, okay. Oh, mickle is the powerful grace that lies in herbs, plants, stones, and their true qualities. For not so vile that on the earth doth live, but so but to the earth some special good doth give. Nor aught so good but strained from that fair use revolts from true birth, stumbling on abuse. Virtue itself turns vice being misapplied, and vice sometimes by action dignified. Within the infant rind of this small flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. For this being smelt with that part cheers each part. Being tasted slays all senses with the heart. Two such opposed kings encamp them still in man as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up the, that plant. So we're going to highlight some in blue because this is Friar Lawrence's famous lines. So uh, we're going to highlight this stuff about the flower and down to rude will. And then we'll make a our comment box right here so that we remind ourselves. So what he's saying here is that men are just like plants. He's looking at this plant and he says, look, look at this plant. This plant, if you smell it, is medicinal. It helps you. If you eat it, it's going to kill you. And he says that men are just like plants. Uh, you can have both good and evil in the same person, which is an interesting thing for Friar Lawrence to say. Like he's by himself, he's gardening, and this is what he's thinking about. I think it's a little foreshadowing for us. Good morrow, Father. Romeo comes in. Good morrow, Father. Benedicte. What early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, and where care lodges, sleep will never lie. But where unbruised youth with unstuffed brain doth couch his limbs, their golden sleep doth reign. Therefore, thy earliness doth assure thou art uproused by some distemperature. Or if not so, then here I hit it right. Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. 
So he's guessed it, right? Romeo didn't go to sleep. So we're going to highlight in orange because that's a plot point. That last is true. The sweeter, sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin. Was thou with Rosaline? So we're going to put a comment box next to this one, right? And explain what's going on. So uh, Lawrence thinks that the reason Romeo was up all night was because he was having sex with Rosaline. Because Friar Lawrence knows what's going on between Rosaline and Romeo. I'm sure that he has tried to counsel young Romeo. Just forget about her. It's not worth it. Like you are putting so much effort in this girl. Don't, don't worry about it. But, you know, Romeo was so... Uh, determined to get Rosaline. He was worried. And this is a big deal because back then the standard was you saved yourself for marriage. And so if he does this, he's sinning, right? And he's making Rosaline sin. With Rosaline, my ghostly father, no, I have forgotten that name and that name's woe. That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? I will tell thee ere thou asked it me again, I have been feasting with mine enemy, whereon a sudden one hath wounded me, that's by me wounded. Both are remedies within thy help and holy physic lies. I bear no hatred, blessed man, for lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. And be plain, good son, and hold me in thy drift. Riddly confession finds but riddling shrift. So he says, um, Lawrence... Tells Romeo to stop talking in riddles. Just get to the point. Because Romeo's skirting around the issue, right? Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine. And all combined, save what thou must combine by holy marriage. When and where and how we met, we wooed and made exchange of vow. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. So we are going to highlight some stuff. Um, we're going to highlight this line. We're going to do some highlighting in orange because this is plot stuff. And then we're going to highlight these lines down here in orange as well. All right. Holy St. Francis, what a change is here. Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Exactly, right? Like, he was all hung up on Rosaline, and now all of a sudden, now he's whatever. Bye. I don't care anymore. Uh, young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes, which is very true. Sometimes men only care about what a girl looks like, and so that's what he's worried about. We're going to highlight in orange. Jesus Maria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. How much salt water thrown away in waste to season love that of it doth not taste. The sun's sun not yet thy sighs from heaven clears thy old groanings. Their old groans ring yet in my ancient ears. Lo, here upon thy cheek the stain doth sit of an old tear that is not washed off yet. If e'er thou wast thyself, and these woes thine, thou and these woes were all for Rosaline. And art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there's no strength in men. So we're going to do a comment box right here. So, um, and actually, let's move this one up here because we're going to do a couple comment boxes. Ah, we got to make a new one. All right. So this one is initially... Lawrence is totally against this, right? He's like, what? You're going to marry Juliet now? What about Rosaline, right? He worries that Romeo is just flitting from one girl to another and that he will take advantage of Juliet. He's like, he's just a player. He's playing the field. He's not really caring about these girls' feelings. He just wants what he wants. And so then down here, uh, Lawrence's advice is to forget Juliet. You spent so much time and worry on Rosaline. 
you should have just stuck with her. So we need to understand that he is totally against this initially. He's like, no, 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 no. You cannot do this. Romeo says, thou chidest me off for loving Ros Rosaline. Chidest means tease. Lawrence says, for doting, not for loving young pupil mine. That's the difference. He says, for doting. We're going to underline that. Maybe. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and make a comment box for it. And we're going to define doting. So doting is extremely and uncritically fond of someone adoring, right? And we're going to write Lawrence understands that Romeo wasn't really in love with Ros Rosaline. Because he says it's doting, right? He says you're a fond of her, but you don't understand what you're getting into, right? For doting, not for loving pupil mine, and baitest me bury love, not in a grave to lay one in and another out to have, I pray thee chide not. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow, the other did not so. Oh, she knew well, thy love did read by rote and could not spell, but come, young waverer, come, go with me. In one respect, I'll thy assistant be, for this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Now, we're going to put a, a comment box right here. And right here in this line, 90 to 95, Lawrence changes his mind and says, yes, I will marry you too. So something must have happened before because before he was against it and now all of a sudden he's for it. And this is the line right here. I, I tried to point to the screen. This is the line right here that Romeo convinces Lawrence just doesn't seem really convincing. So this line is where Romeo convinces Lawrence that he really does love Juliet. But when I read that line, it just doesn't seem super convincing. Okay. Uh, then we're going to highlight in blue because we have some, uh, you know, really good. This is one of Friar Lawrence's well-known lines. So we're going to highlight this stuff in blue. And then we're going to do another comment box. Um, it is kind of crazy how quickly Lawrence changes, changes his mind. Some may say that true love convinced him. But I think that Lawrence has ulterior motives. He thinks that by marrying uh, Romeo and Juliet, that he will be the savior of Verona and stop the feud. What he should have done is gone right to their parents and told them what is going on. Now, there is some evidence to suggest that maybe true love convinced Friar Lawrence, right? He's a believer in true love and he sees it in Romeo in this line. I don't buy it though. I really feel that Friar Lawrence has this ulterior motive and he's like, oh, if I marry these two and it fixes the problems in Verona, because he is aware that there's been this feud and there's been all these problems. He says, I'll be the hero. Everyone will remember Friar Lawrence and how he saved Verona from this awful, awful feud. So Romeo is so excited. Oh, let us hence, I stand on sudden haste. And as you know, a lot of times we see he's running and he like falls down right there, trips. Wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. So Friar Lawrence now on board. Uh, Romeo was able to do part of, he got a friar. He knows when he's going to get married. And now he just needs to tell the nurse. So go back through and annotate our motives our motifs, sorry, we're going to definitely have some past versus future and light and dark going on in here. So go ahead and highlight for those manotates so you have them for later. And we'll see you in Act 2, Scene 4. Bye.